What I got here is the iPhone 13 Pro. And in this video, I want to talk about why this is a way better camera than you might think it actually is. If you've been here on the channel for a while, then you probably know that I do have a vlog channel. If you don't know, I'm gonna drop a link down below. I'm gonna drop a link somewhere here in the frame as well. So you can just head over there, subscribe to the vlog channel and just join in on everything that is not really camera related because I try to separate my main channel from my vlog channel with vlog channel being everything that I do that is not related to camera, basically. But as I'm recording this video, I just got home from a two week trip on Mallorca together with my family. And when we're down there, I wanted to record a whole lot of memories, but to be able to bring this clunky camera setup wherever I went was just not possible. And I could have gone down to my ZV-1, which is still one of my favorite cameras to date, but I decided to use the iPhone 13 for a whole lot of shots that I captured while we were there. And one of the most important things with the iPhone or your smartphone is that it's one of those cameras that you always have with you no matter what, because it's your personal phone. You have everything from emails to Instagram to YouTube statistics, but also your camera. And you know how the saying goes, the best camera is the camera that you got on you. And that is actually true because I think I captured more memories with the iPhone than with my big camera or any other camera. When it comes to battery, I actually think that it is very good because I can usually manage with one charge throughout one entire day if I'm using the phone as a regular phone, answering emails, text, and then filming on top of that. But if I'm doing extensive filming, then I do find it to be a little bit on low end. So I would appreciate if there was a better battery in the next iteration. But the biggest thing in my opinion is that you have three different focal lengths with this camera. You have the ultra wide, which gives you this super cool ultra wide perspective. And it's perfect to shoot time lapses. It's perfect to vlog with. And it gives you this larger than life feeling. And then you have the wide lens, which is basically a 24 millimeter equivalent that crops in a little bit. It looks a little bit more cinematic, a bit more normal, if you may. And then you have the telezoom. Being able to use all of those lenses together when you're recording videos is what makes it such a good camera because you get the different field of view from the shots that you want to get. And when I was down in Mallorca, I always made sure that I tried to get a couple of detailed shots with the telezoom and then take a step back and get the wide shots and then some ultra wide shots and try to switch it up even though I was in the same location. And when you're doing it this way, it makes your videos more interesting. And when you're shooting with all these different lenses, one of the things that makes it such a versatile camera is being able to go up from 24 FPS all the way up to 60 FPS in 4K. And when you have a really good bright daylight, the footage comes out looking so crisp. I can't really tell the difference between this and a DSLR when I'm just using it as mix and match footage between the two. But the most noticeable decrease in image quality comes when you go inside and when you start vlogging without the daylight, it starts to look bad. And the ISO is really noticeable in the image because it's a lot of grain. But having the capability of shooting in 60 FPS makes it so much easier to get those cinematic shots without having anything extra to the phone. I'm just holding the phone like this, moving it forward, make sure they have a little bit of foreground, and then I get the shots that I want. And the entire reason that I used iPhone was because I forgot my CV1 at home. When it came down to it, I used this more than this to shoot most of my videos. Another thing that this can do that the CV1 cannot do is to shoot underwater. I was a very, very hesitant to bring this underwater at first, but then I read up on Apple's website and said like, okay, it's waterproof down to six meters. I might just take it down with me. And then I recorded an entire Q and A in the pool where I dove down with the phone in the beginning and at the end of the video. It's kind of a fun thing. And honestly, I do think it would break, but I had to take the chance because 
if they say so, it should be possible. And the day after, I actually used it to shoot me and Alex and me and Amanda in the pool for an extensive period of time. And ever since I have had absolutely no issues with the phone. So being able to use the different lenses underwater as well, if you want to do that and shoot in 50 or 60 FPS to really slow time down, that is something that I think is super cool and something that you can't do with a DSLR or a CB1 or any other similar camera. You have to have an action camera or a smartphone that is water resistant. The biggest downside that I noticed with the phone though when I was recording and using it to vlog with was the microphone. I don't like the way that smartphone microphone sounds. One of the best things about going on trips like this is when you have the time to explore and find new places. And since I've been to Europe a whole lot of times, it feels kind of the same on all the Mediterranean countries, but you're always fascinated about how beautiful it looks in these older cities. But what I've found to be the best possible solution to record clear voice is to kind of hold the phone like this so you kind of cup it into your hand and the audio bounces in like that but when you turn it around you gotta make sure that you do the same thing without touching the screen i'm personally not a huge fan of adding on external things to my phone or camera or anything else i'm more of like in the moment kind of shooter but there's definitely some good microphones that you can buy for the lighting connector if you want one i'm also gonna say that when it comes to shooting underwater I've only tried this in the pool, not in any sort of salt water because salt water is not good for tech. It, I'm gonna leave that up to you, but when it comes to in fresh water or in pool water, I've had absolutely zero issues. The biggest downside, in my opinion, when it comes to a phone like this is that you can't place it flat. With a DSLR, you can place it flat like that. With an iPhone, you have to balance it or lean it against something and then you can get the shot. There's probably a bunch of different cases that you can buy for it and then you can have a built-in stand. I just think that if you had something that was a little bit more slim and something built in that could have like an angle like that, it would be so good. I don't think that an iPhone can replace a DSLR or a mirrorless camera or ZV-1 because I think that those provide much better image quality because you have a bigger sensor and a better lens. But I do think it's a very liberating feeling when I can just pull up my phone and start shooting the videos and keep the vlog going or keep the video going with just this makes things so much easier than having to bring a big camera if I don't have the room or if I don't have the, you know, space to put it or hide it or bring it to the beach or something similar, you know? And one of the most important things that I've noticed with the camera to be able to get the best image quality without having to do any sort of work is to make sure they turn HDR off. I'm not a huge fan of HDR stuff in my phone, so I have it turned off and now everything just looks good straight at the camera, straight at the phone, and that is what I like because I'm shooting stuff on the go. I would love to know if you are using your phone to create videos with, or if it's more of a phone with a camera that collects memories, because I've heard a lot of people that say that a smartphone is not a good enough camera, but I gotta disagree because smartphone has come a really long way nowadays. And I mean, like if you look at Xperia Pro I or the Xperia 1 Mark IV, you have 4K 120 in those cameras. So I would love to know. Do drop a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Peter Frans Wieden is saying goodbye. And don't forget to subscribe. Hi, do.